people are the majority of the voting age in yes. our country. Why can't young people organize themselves and throw out the 70-year-olds? <laughs> the question is not whether you can throw out the 70-year-olds. The question is that in a situation where the same mind clamors for bread and books, bread will always win. And the political elite of this country have mastered the art because they know that 500 naira and 1,000 naira will make people sell their votes at the polling booth. And so it is, we, it is not that we young people don't want to organize to take over from you. But it is that your generation has the money to keep our generation aground. And you have deliberate... And your generation has deliberately, sir, except for very few progressives like you, refused to give us the kind of education that will empower us to demand mandatory accountability from your generation. The kind of education that will help us to become innovative and drive competitiveness for Nigeria's economy. The, when you say that banks are giving loans to small businesses in Nigeria, the banks come with double-digit loans that are unaffordable for those small businesses. When you talk about youth and un unemployment, the idea is not even youth unemployment. The idea is that youth unemployability is a greater challenge above youth unemployment. Thank when you, you. When you, you do not empower our generation yeah. to speak English so that we can get the right kind of jobs that will help us stand side by side by Singapore, Finland, and Canada, you deprive us of our fundamental humanity. I agree with you. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm sorry, <laughs> Professor Batitomi. I do not mean to be combative or to be activist. This is a platform for reasonable conversation. Absolutely. But I, I, I believe that young people like me get the opportunity to speak through to power only once in a while. And I stand here for an entire generation. I cannot curry it for the old people. The, the policy makers, the, the captains of industry, the people who make decisions in private companies to sponsor reality shows and refuse to sponsor youth empowerment programs, they sit in this room. And it is therefore important that I put the voice of my generation on the agenda because I know you people are That's the ones. That's why I started with you. you. <laughs> Give me a break. I started with you because I know that. <laughs> Based on logistics, there are two categories of young people in Nigeria today. The, the first category, the educated, empowered, and privileged. The second category, the poor, the deprived, and angry young people who form the majority of the youth population you refer to, and are the ones that have become the tools of trade in the hands of the politicians. So we, the young people who are educated and can make the type of decisions and understand where Nigeria needs to go, are in our minority. The ones in the villages and the bushes who don't have education, who are poor and angry, who become area boys, do not even have food to eat three times one day. Now, where do we go from here? How do we promote inclusiveness? Nigeria and Africa have to become entities that embrace consequences. What do I mean by that? Consequences, when people, when we begin to punish bad behavior in Nigeria, when people steal our money and we put them in jail, Nigeria and Africa will become better countries. I'll tell you why, sir. In Singapore, under Lee Kuan Yew, a minister stole, a minister bargained with a, a contractor and took money and took bribe from him to give him a contract. When Lee Kuan Yew found out, the minister committed suicide and left a note behind that he would rather die than face the consequences Lee Kuan Yew would place there. In Nigeria, when people steal our money, we give them chieftaincy titles. When they steal our money, we give them doctorate degrees. Somebody said that the reason why rich people in Nigeria don't fund research is because there's no substance at the base of their wealth. So when we do not place consequences side by side our actions, we do not send a strong message to the people who have stolen. How do we promote inclusiveness? Number one, we need to be able to embrace the principles of equality, where the children of the rich and the children of the poor can go to public schools because public servants elevate the quality of education in the public schools. Number two, where the children of the poor can get jobs without having connections. When they go to University of Lagos and go to University of Ibadan and they are given the same kind of jobs that people like me who went to Harvard University Kennedy School can get. That is when we become an equal country. 
A country, a country where the children of the rich go to school abroad and come back to lead the corporations is not a country. We're just simply cohabiting. Why do I say that? As, as things currently stand, one day, during the Occupy Nigeria protest in 2012, the area boys didn't protest to Oshodi. They didn't go to Agege. They didn't go to Yanokpaja. They went to VGC. They went to Ikoi. They went to Lagos. They went to VR. It means that they know the homes where the rich people, the children of the rich people stay. And the truth is that in a country like this, where we continue to segregate and keep the children of the poor at ground, this country is going to go up in flames one day. People are going to get to a point where they cannot take any more. And people are going to get to a point where they cannot take any more. When we create jobs, we cannot, within companies, we cannot decide that, for example, the children of the rich must be superior to the children of the poor. And as we continue to promote the ideas of diverse, diversity, of inclusion, of equality, we need to move forward and think about how to strengthen the economy of Nigeria by diversifying.